Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about connecting our ESP32s to a little module called the MPU6050. Uh, this device is a 3-axis accelerometer and gyroscope. Wow, sounds good. Now you can pick these up for about four bucks and uh, what they do is they connect via the I squared C interface. So what does the module actually do? Well, if we think about acceleration, acceleration is a change in speed over time. It's also a way of measuring forces. If we remember back to our physics days, force equals mass times acceleration. So if we know the acceleration of something, we know it's force being applied to it. Okay, well that's all great. Now, when we apply a force, we apply a force in a direction. Force is a vector quantity, or acceleration, of course, is a vector quantity. So when we accelerate something, we accelerate it or apply a force to it in a particular direction. So since we live in a three-dimensional world, there are three dimensions across which we can measure a force. If I push straight down, I'm applying a force in the z-axis. If I push front to back, I'm applying a force in the y-axis. If I push left to right, I'm applying a force in the x-axis. So if I measure a force, a force will be composed of the vector addition of the x, the y, and the z parts. Okay, well, that's kind of mathematical, but it makes sense. Now, on our planet, on our gravity, everything is a force applied to it, and that is the force of gravity pulling it down. Now, if we examine uh, or we measure the force applied to even a stationary object, we will find that there is a force being applied on it due to gravity. So even if we have one of these modules, these MPU 6050s lying on our desk, we will be able to detect that it's accelerating or it has a force applied on it caused by gravity. And we will measure that as pointing straight down. Now, if we then tilt the MPU 6050 device, if we move it front to back or we tilt it side to side, we will detect that the force of gravity remains constant, but now that force vector arithmetic is going to be spread over distinct axis. So this then pushes us or, or brings us to the purpose of this device. It's a tilt meter. It's what you find in your cell phones and other devices that allows you to determine the orientation of your device relative to the Earth, or more specifically, relative to the force of gravity, which is pointing straight down. So by reading data from the MPU 6050, we can determine the orientation of our device. Now, this device, the MPU 6050, has other sensors built into it, specifically gyroscopic sensors, but we'll come to that in a different tutorial. For right now, we'll just concentrate on measuring the force of gravity. So, if we uh, look at a schematic of how we attach the MPU 6050 to our ESP32, couldn't be simpler. Again, it's just an I squared C device. You attach uh, the data line of the MPU 6050 to the data pin that you choose for your I squared C. Same with the clock. And then we write an application program which reads out the first six bytes of data on it, which are the three 16 bit values for the acceleration X, Y, and Z. So, in, English, in, in simple terms, this is this acceleration. I'll put this up on, uh, on the repository. This is this acceleration. This is this application. And what we do is we put ourselves into a loop. We say we want to read the MPU 6050 registers starting at the acceleration out. We read six bytes of data, and then we calculate the X, the Y, and the Z components as 16-bit uh, sign values. So once we deploy this application and we load it into our ESP32, what we get are three numbers. Every time we read the device, we get three numbers. The amount of force in the X direction, the amount of force in the Y direction, and the amount of force in the Z direction. 
Now, the although quite sensitive, uh, the uh, the sensor isn't perfect. So notice that I've got a stationary ESP32 on my desk here, and yet it still claims that it's uh, that there's a force in the X and the Y axis, and that could be because my device is not perfectly flat on the desktop. Notice the majority of force being applied to my device is on the Z axis. Now, if I tilt the device, so I'm tilting it by 90 degrees. And we now should be at exactly 90 degrees. Notice how the force has now moved to the x-axis and the y and the z. If I flip it 180 degrees from where we started, we've now got a force in the negative z-axis. Flip it 180 back, the force is back in the pure z-axis. And of course, one more tilt, support tilt it this way, and we're now in the y-axis predominantly. So, by uh, uh, reading from an ESP32, the inputs from, or the outputs from the MPU6050, we can very quickly determine the acceleration being applied to the device. So, what's the, what's the use of this? Uh, we can have a tilt sensor, we can detect true acceleration. So, for example, if we're in a car and measuring this data, uh, we should find that we're able to measure the braking and acceleration power of the car uh, and see how that's changing over time. Uh, obviously we can detect tilts so we could make a very simple spirit level or uh, level meter. Um, that's about it. I mean, these are these are some of the these are some of the, the the useful devices. Perhaps if we've got a robot and we want to apply more power when it goes uphill or less power when it's trundling downhill, we can detect the tilt of the robot again as a function of the uh, acceleration. Uh, one particularly cool project you might want to attempt is uh, a two-wheeled robot. This is a robot which is like the uh, uh, I forget the name of those devices, those scooters where they run around in two wheels. Nope, the name's gone. But uh, uh, this this could be a simple de this could be a device where your robot on two wheels, uh, if it starts to tilt forward, we could detect that and spin the wheels backward. If it spins back, if it, the robot is falling backwards, we could spin the wheels forward. Segway, that's the machine. The Segway, it's like the Segway device. I hope you found something useful in this tutorial, and as always, I look forward to making more of these in the future. Thanks now, and bye-bye.